You know what's really crazy? More than that, I used to feel like I could see people's beliefs. It felt like in the matrix when it's like those green codes are coming down. As we referenced at the beginning of the show, you grew up the daughter of personal development guru by the name of Morty Lefko. And yeah. he was the president and founder of the Lefko Institute until he passed in 2015. And you referenced before, you know, growing up as a little girl in that kind of house and that environment. What's one of your earlier memories of your father either instilling some kind of personal development into you that you would later draw upon in your, you know, adult professional career or just anything that stuck with you that's profoundly impacted your life through your, I guess, adolescence and teens and into adulthood? Yeah. So I'm going to give two examples, one to kind of give each side of the coin, I have a memory of being in kindergarten and I had a teacher who I thought was mean to me and I didn't like her because I thought she was mean. And I told my dad um, that she hurt my feelings and I was upset. And he asked what meaning I was giving her behavior. And he said, if you want to be upset, you can. I just don't know why you would want to be. If you change the meaning, you won't feel upset. And so I was introduced to these concepts really young and it gave me this sense that my mind had power and that I could create my experience based off of my mindset. Now, the positive of that was it was very empowering. The negative was I was a little young. <laughs> so it I almost was introduced so early that I understood these concepts in a way where I, you know, didn't feel um like I developed necessarily enough of a relationship with my feelings and emotions at that age. But I think that was that was one example. But the the other thing was because of the way that my dad viewed the mind and how much power it has, right? That it gave me a lot of the conviction that I think I needed to build my career the way that I did. I understood from a young age that mindset is the difference between you having a great relationship and sabotaging it. If you believe you deserve love or you believe that you're undeserving, that's the difference between you walking away from something great. That if you believe that you are competent, you will continue to persevere when you make mistakes. If you have a belief that you're not competent, you will likely give up. When I look at the choices we make, mindset is the difference between you having everything you want and sitting on the couch feeling like crap about yourself, right? It's the difference between you overcoming hard things and not. And so there was a deep power in knowing that if mindset is everything, right? According to my dad, I, I agree in a lot of ways, right? That if mindset is everything, then infinite possibilities at our fingertips and suffering is optional if we know how to work through it. So those two examples for me really encapsulate what it was like growing up with my dad and what that kind of gave me professionally and personally. Did you try to lecture a seven-year-old when you were seven in the sand pit at the school playground <laughs> during lunch break? <laughs> I had no idea what to tell people my parents did for a living. They would say, what do your parents do for a living? And I'm like six years old. And I was like, my dad helps people eliminate negative beliefs about themselves and the world. They're looking at me like I'm crazy. And I was like, please don't ask what they do for a living. Please. I was like, couldn't they just be like a firefighter or a teacher? I had no idea how to talk about it outside of my family. Did you witness the parents of your fellow schoolmates or school friends misbehaving and could you identify very quickly as like a seven or eight or nine year old all oh, those adults there the parents of my friend have a poor mindset you know what's what's really crazy more than that I used to feel like I could see people's beliefs like it felt like in the matrix when it's like those green you know codes are coming down it I would watch somebody kind of need to steal the attention. And I would see what my dad used to call survival strategy beliefs, that if you believe you're not good enough and you believe that what makes you good enough is having people think well of you or getting attention or being liked, it was like I could watch their beliefs at play or if somebody always needed to be the smartest person in the class or was raising their hand, not because they wanted to share, but with that kind of eagerness of somebody who needs validation and being like, wow, that person, if they feel you know, not worthwhile or not important, that they feel like they need to be the smartest or have all the answers to be important or worthwhile. So I had this sense, like I could see the matrix and I have a vivid memory of, it's funny that you talked about the playground of being outside. I think I must've been 
maybe eight or nine years old, I have this vivid memory of being like, I have to turn this off. Like I can't live, like I can't walk around seeing people's beliefs. Like it makes me, it's too much. And I remember turning it off and I could turn it back on, but it was like a, it was like a light switch. And I feel like through my life, that has been a, a huge gift because it was almost a little bit overwhelming to know too much when I didn't know what to do with it. And then also later in life, it's like when I'm with my friends, I don't want to be talking about their beliefs or I want to have friendships. And so being able to turn that off and then turn it back on when I'm in work mode has really served me because <laughs> it was really overwhelming.